All right, we have for this machine problem a pair of uh, locking pliers. And man, pliers should be the easiest things to analyze, but they tend to sometimes be actually quite challenging here. All right? Once again, we've got to identify just how many pieces do we really have here. We've got the upper grip AB, we've got the lower arm CD, we have the lower jaw BD, and we have the short strut. AC. We're applying forces to the handles of 300 newtons to equal opposite forces and we're asking well, what force do we end up getting into this little part that we're uh, gripping a hold of. Right? And you're going to find out that this is quite amazing what this little machine can do and the forces that end up getting generated. Right? So let's um, draw our upper uh, jaw and handle AB. It's one long piece. We don't always have to do free body diagrams of just one piece. We can sometimes do this as a sub-assembly, but we're going to start off here just doing it like this. All right, now, one of the things to, to make sure that we do is to put all the appropriate forces on there. So, for instance, we've got this force of 300 newtons way out here at the far left. We know over at the place where the little specimen is located that we've got some sort of force we're squeezing that so it's pushing back force that's the grip force that we're really after in this whole system right and then we've got a pin at B that let's see that pin at B is at the same elevation as the pin at A so sometimes I need to be real careful how I've done the uh, set up this system um, and sometimes I can be a little sloppy meaning the shape of this whole thing doesn't really matter all I need to do is get things in the relative right locations the strut AC is going to get squeezed so it's a two force member that's critical to identify pin pin no applied loads to it other than what happens through the pins at in this case at either end so that's that piece AC now at B, that allows me to begin to figure out what's going on because if AC is in compression, AC X component is going to the left, that means the component for B is going to the right. So there's your BX and there's your BY, which I, I don't know, I'm just going to guess maybe it's going up. I don't really know what it does. Right? don't know what I can do with this right now. I got one, two, three, four independent forces. I do want to get G. If I only knew AC, I could some moments about B and I could get this force G. That's what we're asked to, to find. But I don't know AC, but it makes me think, well, let's go find out what AC does. All right, so let's put this one in here at roughly its appropriate angle. It's going to be in compression, so I think. There's AC and AC. Now, huh, I don't know its real geometry here. This is a little kind of confusing. Let's see. Um, yeah, I don't know. That just looks confusing right now. I don't know what it is. I'm going to leave it alone on the geometry side of things for just a little bit. All right? And then we got this member CD. That's this lower handle. So let's get that in here. And here we do want to be careful because point C is above point D. So I do want to get that in there relatively correct. And then we got the lower handle force of 300 newtons down there. Right now at C, I know that that strut is going to be acting downwards to the right. If I'm wrong about this AC, I'm consistent at least, and so if I'm, I've got it the wrong direction, then I can just ripple that effect right on through. And then we'll have DX and DY. Well, it's real clear here that DX has to be to the left, and it's not necessarily clear, but I think DY might be acting up. Hmm. Okay. Well, now wait a minute here. I could go find AC because, hey, I like this, because look what's going to happen here. I can some moments about D, and now I know AC, and I said that if I knew AC, I could go find G right off the bat. So 
I'm going to not think about this. I'm just going to go do it. All right, so there's ACY. There's ACX components. All right, ACX does go above point D, and that's given to us by the 6 millimeters. And the horizontal dis distance in between is 30 millimeters. Right? So I've got those two. Now it looks to me like I'm going to have to go figure out what the orientation of AC is. It's 120 minus 30, so there's 90 millimeters there. And then, then, then I've got 30 millimeters here. So that's a 1 to 3 relationship, so that would be square root of 10 for the hypotenuse in terms of the proportions of that. So ACY would be the short one, so that's 1 over the square root of 10 times AC, and ACX would be the long one, that would be 3 over the square root of 10 times AC. That all makes this so much easier to know, now go and write our equation of equilibrium. We're going to sum moments about point D. Let's take clockwise positive. We'll have 300 newtons times its moment arm to point D. D, that's 30 plus 96, or 126 millimeters. So there's your, those things. ACX is, is above, so spinning as shown in a, sorry, I'm off the screen maybe. All right, so spinning clockwise, so that's also plus, so that's 3 over square root of 10 AC times 6 millimeters. And then minus ACY, that's AC over the square root of 10, times 30 millimeters. And that will be set equal to 0. All right, so that means, of course, the right-hand side, the stuff, all right, that's 3 over the square root of 10. Oh, no, I got the 18 in there. Looks like I'm just going to have to maybe actually sit down and do this for real. All right, so... There's our 300 over 126. I know that should become minus, but now I'm going to make that a minus and that a plus. So I'm going to get 30 minus 18, or 12 over root 10 AC. 30 minus the 18 is 12. 12. All right, there we go. And so I think I did that right. So 300 times 126 times 10 root 10 divided by 12. Wow, holy schmoly, AC is huge. 9,961 newtons. Holy schmoly, I want to check those numbers out. 300 times 126, that's this whole moment arm, okay? So 300 times 126, that's 37,800, okay? And then I got 3 over the 3 times 6, so 3 times 6 divided by 10 root. 10, that is, equals that, plus then 30 divided by 10 root equals that, 3.79, take it over there, times that, times that, times that, and I get, wow, ninth, wow, that is called mechanical advantage, taking a small force and turning it into a really large one, wow, that, that's huge, divided by 300, that's a mechanical advantage of 33, yeah, that's pretty darn big. All caused by what happens right in here, right? Small moment arms compared to much larger moment arms, right? If I found an error in there, or I, let me rephrase it. If you find an error in there in the math, you know you send me a, a note, and you might get some bonus points. All right, so now we know AC, and now we can come back, and we can sum moments about point B. And I'm going to take counterclockwise as positive. And notice ACX goes right through this point. That's kind of cool. So we'll only have ACY. And ACY is the, um, yep, I'm just double checking my moment arms here. This was 90, that was 30. Yep, yeah, we're okay. All right, so ACY is 1 over root 10. So 9961 over root 10. 10 to get that vertical component, right? Its moment arm is going to be, here we are at A, over to B is 120 millimeters, okay? And then we're going to, let's see, that should have been a minus. 
right? So that's the y component of AC times its moment arm. And then we don't have to worry about bx, by. Oh, you got to include this though, the 300, don't you? Yeah, you do. So plus 300 times that total distance is 132 millimeters. And then we're going to have plus then this jaw distance 36 times g equals to 0. So g then will be equal to, well, 36g will be equal to then uh, 9961 times 120 over root 10 minus 310 times 132. Now, if we get a negative value here, we know we've made a mistake, and I'll redo the video because I would never show you a wrong video. <laughs> Well, maybe I would by mistake. That I messed up because that's 300, not 310. Alright, so let's do that again. Okay, and then divide by 36, and we get a grip force of 9,400 newtons. And it was a positive value that told us that we did all, everything else correct. And there's your answer. Now, here's the thing, big picture, right? To get what we wanted, we had to do different parts, different free body diagrams. A critical piece was recognizing the two force member AC. So we ended up really having three free body diagrams. We had to go somewhere else to get something so that we could come back to here and write the uh, equilibrium equation. Now we never used the bottom piece. In reality, we probably could have. And let's see what that free body diagram might have looked like. Right now, you've got the grip force. We wanted that. You have. Bx and By that we want to show opposite of where we had it before, in case we ever use it. Point D is over to the right, and so there again we want to show that opposite. So we could have used this to find a relationship between Dx and Dy, then we could have gone up into here, and that looks convoluted and not particularly all that helpful, but that is what the other free by diagram might have looked like. Now, the other thing we might have been able to do is the lower handle and not pull the pin at D, but rather keep that subassembly together and then we've got our grip force. We're interested in that. We've got then our by and our bx and our ac and then of course our 300 here. So it looks to me like we're stuck. We would have had to still go get the ac value from free by diagram cd and then we could have some moments once we know AC and gone directly here some moments about B on this one to have found G would have been an equivalent way to have gotten there and we could independently verify that we get 9400 uh, newtons for our answer. And there again just as one last little check 9400 divided by input value of 300 tells me that our mechanical advantage which was force out over the force in and that was force out of 9400 over our input of 300 and that's a mechanical advantage of over 31. That's a nice large mechanical advantage um, in our system. And that's of course uh, the whole point of pliers to begin with. Well, a major part of the whole point. <laughs>